Destroying the Cincinnati Bengals 36 to 10. Now, I've been looking forward to talking about this game all this afternoon. Because a lot of people were saying, JT, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to lose to the Cincinnati Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to pull off the upset. And I've been telling people, I said, look, why do you think Cincinnati is going to beat Pittsburgh? And here's what they say. Well, they say, oh, well, JT, Pittsburgh almost lost to Dallas last week. Pittsburgh isn't a great team. Big Ben isn't great. Big Ben is washed up, JT. The Steelers are overrated. Well, we saw what happened this afternoon. Cincinnati looked like the far um, inferior team this afternoon in Pittsburgh. And that's just me being nice. Cincinnati got smacked around like a rag dog. Let me tell you what this game reminds me of. So, for those of you guys who watch college football, you guys know when Alabama plays like one of those little um, FCS schools, like a, um, a Southern Alabama or something like that, and they pay that school $500,000 to blow them out? That's what this game looked like. This was the first game that I've watched Pittsburgh all year come into a game and dominate for all four quarters. Aside from that Cleveland Browns game, this has been the second most dominant game that the Steelers have played this season. The offense didn't stall. The defense played great. And Joe Burrow was getting shredded back there. I mean, I thought the dude was about to get killed, if I'm being honest with you. And a lot of Cincinnati Bengals fans kind of had a little bit of confidence going into this game because they were like, well, JT, we didn't allow no sacks against Tennessee. And I said, look, that was Tennessee. Tennessee hasn't gotten pressure on the quarterback all year. You have a Steelers defense that's averaging around almost five sacks per game, the most in the NFL. It's no way the Bengals are going to walk out of this game without giving up a couple of sacks. Then what was the second thing I said? I said that if Joe Burrow throws the ball more than 40 times to win the football game, Cincinnati has absolutely no chance of winning. Well, Joe Burrow threw the ball for 40 times this game. And I said that if Cincinnati can't run the ball successfully, they're not going to win. Well, Cincinnati was able to run the football. They had 139 rushing yards as a team on 21 total carries, and they still lost. You want to know why? Because they got down so big that you had no choice but to throw the football to get back into the game. And when you have to throw the football to beat Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh's defense knows that you're going to throw the football, they lick their chops, and you know they smell blood in the water. You ever saw Jaws? That's what the Steelers' defense is. The Steelers, when they saw Cincinnati was down by multiple possessions, they were looking at their chops, they smelt blood in the water, and they came up and they attacked. Okay, because you're not going to be Pittsburgh if you got to throw the football 40 times on this defense. I don't care how tired, how gassed this defense may be, at the end of the day, if the pass rusher that the Steelers have, it's going to be really hard to throw the football 40 times and not allow more than four sacks. Remind you that the Steelers have three players on the defensive line alone that are going to be in consideration for being a first-team All-Pro. But Dupree, Cam Hayward, and TJ Watt. Oh, also, I can't forget about Stephon Tewitt. So the Steelers are going to have four potential guys who are going to be in the conversation on the defensive line for a first-team All-Pro. That's scary. And for the Bengals wide receivers, T. Higgins had a really good game. But Joe Burrow was running for his life back there. Now, for Pittsburgh... You held Cincinnati to 0-13 on third down. That was another large reason why Cincinnati lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers. There is no way that you are going to win any game when you can't convert on third down. Because if you're on 13 on third down, how are you supposed to keep the drive alive? How are you supposed to move the ball down the field? Get what I'm saying? Unless you are having big chunk plays, that's the only way. There's no, there's no possible way... You're going to win a lot of games in the NFL, not convert on third down. And I can't remember the last time a team won a game when they had no third down conversions. This has to be the first time in a long time that I've seen the team perform this badly on third down. And what this shows you is that Pittsburgh was just a more superior team 
than Cincinnati. Now, I thought this game was going to be a little bit more closer. I thought Pittsburgh would win this game 28-20. to But, I mean, Pittsburgh just dominated Cincinnati. Cincinnati had no answer. Now, this is one um, problem that I have with Pittsburgh in this win. Pittsburgh continues to disappoint me when it comes to running the football. Pittsburgh ran the ball 20 times this game. They have 44 rushing yards. They're averaging 2.2 yards per carry. That is not good. And when you get into the playoffs, you're not going to be able to beat everybody through the air all the time. Eventually, you're going to have to be able to dominate teams by running the football. Okay, but a big reason why running the football didn't matter against Pittsburgh is because the offense, when it came to the passing game, was going. When you're in a rhythm on offense... When everything is clicking, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what the old folks say, right? So for Pittsburgh, you didn't really have to throw the ball down the field all that much. Basically, all Big Ben was doing was, you know, throwing the ball short to his wide receivers and let his wide receivers do all the work. And Deontay Johnson had a breakout game. Deontay Johnson showed a lot of people why everybody was so excited about him coming into the season. It was a lot of talk about Deontay Johnson in the offseason season. Maybe becoming the next Antonio Brown or being Antonio Brown 2.0. And he showed out tonight. He really did. And Chase Claypool also caught two touchdowns. Juju Smith-Schuster did what he did best, keeping the drive alive on third down. The Steelers, in my opinion, are still one of the best teams in the NFL. I believe that the Steelers are the second best team in the NFL. I believe that they're better than any team in the NFC. And that they're the second best team in the AFC besides Kansas City. So for Pittsburgh, this was a great game, a really encouraging win. You needed to come in and dominate the opponent, and that's what you were able to do.